Netflix is revolutionising the way we watch TV, but some fear that Netflix could be closing the curtains on the big screen. So, is there any evidence to suggest that our love for streaming movies at home could spell the end for cinema? US-based company Netflix has had more than a few reasons to celebrate recently. It's added a record-breaking number of paid users to its online streaming service in 2018, now topping 139 million worldwide. That's three times the number of accounts just five years ago. Keep in mind that more than one person could be using an account, so its reach is even bigger. The USA is Netflix's top market globally, with over 40% of all paid users based there. The company has also invested heavily into producing original content, including big movie blockbusters. Analysts estimate that the company spent $13 billion on titles like Narcos and Bird Box in 2018. That would be enough to make Titanic, one of the most expensive films ever made, 65 times. Its efforts seem to be paying off. This year, its critically acclaimed film Roma has earned the streaming service its first Best Picture Oscar nomination, with 10 in total. You might think that can only benefit the box office, but Netflix has been criticised for showing films in a relatively small number of movie theatres and for a limited time before streaming them on its own site. So, are there any signs that cinemas are suffering? Not really. While analysts said that 2017 was a tough year for movie makers, last year saw a boost for the box office. Worldwide, cinemas made over $41.5 billion. That's 2.6% more than in 2017. The top three markets, the USA, China and the UK, all saw increases in revenues too. And moviegoers in America generated nearly $12 billion for the industry. There are other reasons to be sceptical of the suggestions that the rising popularity of Netflix is to blame for the perceived decline of cinema. Comparing the trends in cinema revenues and streaming services tells us little about how one impacts the other. Just like the consumption of mozzarella cheese can't really explain the rise in the number of civil engineering doctorates awarded, even though they're both going up. There are a number of other factors at play which are likely to contribute to the possible success or failure of cinemas and streaming services. But is there any evidence to suggest that Netflix and movie theatres are competing for audiences? That's a tricky one too. One US study by NATO, that's the National Association of Theatre Owners in the States, not the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, surveyed just under 2,000 people in the US who both streamed content and saw at least one film in the cinema over the last year. They found that people who watch a lot of stream programs also go to the cinema frequently, while those who don't subscribe rarely visit the movie theatre either. But even that doesn't tell us conclusively about how the use of one platform actually affects people's cinema habits. Remember, it was thought that bringing televisions into homes in the 1950s could kill off Hollywood too. And, like TV and cinemas, streaming services such as Netflix face a few challenges of their own. Netflix uses debt to finance its spending on content and has said it will raise prices in the USA and in Latin America as it needs to make more cash. The cheapest plan will now be $8.99 a month. That's about the same price for seeing a movie at a cinema, with a ticket costing $8.97 in the US. Could that make streamers switch off? The company will also see stiff competition, not just from the likes of Amazon, which has picked up a few awards of its own, but also Disney+. Plus. Disney's streaming service is due to launch in late 2019. That will strip Netflix of several popular Disney-owned shows on its platform. Either way, cinema lovers need not panic, for now. The battle for viewers' eyeballs and their cash is just heating up.